Matt May is a man who thinks about accessibility. He thinks about it a lot. He worked at the W3C doing it. He worked at Home Grocer. Was it Home Grocer, Amazon, now Adobe. One time we went to the movies and he got the little screen that sits in front of you so he could see the, the subtitles that are just for people who are nearsighted. And Matt's going to share with us why this is important and what we can learn from it. Please welcome Matt May. Thanks. So my title at, at Adobe is Accessibility Engineer. And I get a lot of people asking me, what is it that you do? And my answer is, to them is, I, I work on making uh, Adobe software more usable by people with, with disabilities. Um, and the, the thing is, people usually latch on that word disability. And they go, OK, disability equals accessibility. And therefore, uh, you know, it's, like a, it's like a noun. Uh, and it's like a place. It's like there's this, this place uh, somewhere where people are walking around in, or in, with canes or with wheelchairs. And you know, we go and visit those places. But then uh, you know, it, we can just kind of forget about it. Um, but you know, where the rubber hits the road, literally in this case, is uh, something like curb cuts. You know, Chances are you've used an accessibility feature just walking to this place if you had to walk more than a block, which you did because there's no parking around here. Um, so the benefits accrue to everyone when, when we think about things about in, in terms of accessibility. And the research that goes into the things in, in the world of accessibility um, are usually reused for, uh, for the purposes of, of, of everyone involved. A good case of that is uh, voice recognition and voice synthesis. Now, we're using this to uh, you know, check our stocks on the, on the phone or to you know, interact with phone trees or things like that. But these are things that were invented in the 1970s by uh, Kurzweil did, did one specifically for the purposes of accessibility. Um, another one is television and closed captioning. Um, since the early 90s, uh, most televisions have, have been required to have closed captioning circuitry uh, built into them. Um, and now what we find is that when you go into the average bar, for example, to see the worst football game of the decade, Now you can now you can watch the you know the, the captions on uh, on this and it will work you, know, you, you can you can do this and still um, weep to your friends over the final output. Now we're working on this in in web video the, the same way and and the issue here is that that we are experiencing an explosion of the amount of content that's, that's happening through YouTube's etc. Um, and being able to caption that that information for no other reason uh, than than just to uh, to keep that content so that you can search on it and do do things like that, you know. And as you can see by this chart, I'm kidding. That's just an accessibility joke. Um, <laughs> but the point is, um, you know, we're getting older. Uh, and and uh, if I did have a chart there, I'd be showing you the fact that the, that the fastest growing groups on, on, on the web tend to be 49 to 64 and 65 and up. The reason being that most of the rest of us in the United States, at least, are saturated. So if you're looking to, to get new users, you, the thing that you need to be doing is realizing that people's vision are, are, are going. Their eyes, the, the vision in their eyes are starting to yellow. It's getting a little difficult to hear things. It's getting a little difficult to use the mouse. And it gives you an idea of, like, what is disability meet? You know, another example here, you know, have, has anybody noticed that uh, traffic lights, the green light tends to be a little bluer than it used to be? That's an accessibility feature. Um, given the size of this room, I'd guess about at least 10 of you have red, green color blindness in some, uh, in some sense. Now this is, uh, you know, the, the reason that it's turning blue is so that people can discern that color better. Um, these things can be in invisible. And the people who have these problems are invisible as well. Uh, something that I call situational disability. Um, when I'm walking around with a, you know, a headset on, uh, I mean, I'm experiencing situational deafness. And the people around me are going to need to notice this fact when, they're, you know, when I'm about to get run over by them. Um, in another case, I mean, we have the, big, the next big thing for accessibility is the iPhone. This is one of these devices where it's the first time that a lot of people are going to experience things like, well, I can't really see that. It's, it's, a, little too, you know, it's a little too small. Or I, my, I can't really click on that thing. Um, and as an example of that, I take the New York Times. You know, one of the best things that I've heard about this, uh, about the, uh, this problem is like, I have a 20 pixel link, and how am I going to hit it with my 40 pixel finger? You know, now let's look at uh, you know cognitive problems. Now uh, WebAIM, which is a, a group at the, the University of Utah, uh, has broken it down into these six different things: memory, problem solving, attention, reading and language, math, visual comprehension. Everyone, sit here and think about this, and think about when this happens to you. And I'm going to guess it's something somewhere between the time you wake up and the second cup of coffee. Everyone at all times are, is is subject to cognitive disabilities in one, in one sense or another. It's not just there's nothing and Down syndrome. There's a whole range. And it, 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 
And what it all and what it means is that you know, it, all joking aside, you know, at some at some time in some situation, we are all disabled. It's not about uh, it, it's not about us and them. There is only us. And the the thing that we talk about in accessibility is that we are designing for our future selves. Thank you.